Hey, what is going on YouTube? Aaron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And guys, buckle up because this was quite <laughs> the crazy wild ride here. We hopped in the Bragoon. We went to a legendary game. I know, my first mistake, but we got in a truly epic replay for you guys. I won't spoil the total XP, but I think this is my highest XP, especially in a battleship. Uh, battleship XP is a little bit harder to get because you can't really get the caps as easily. Uh, but yeah, th this was a fantastic game nonetheless. Now, this game was eerily similar to our Anchorage game the other day, where our team does the classic blue team thing of dying very early on without gaining much position. Now, if you go in, you get a cap, you take a few ships with you, that's acceptable. But if you're dying as early as I'm witnessing in these games, you have to reevaluate your strategy. But regardless here, we spawned on the left, and we're going to take this left flank. This is a pretty balanced, I mean perfectly balanced legendary tier matchmaking. Uh, three destroyers, three cruisers, and three battleships, and I honestly think that is the most fun matchup or setup in the game. Now, honestly, maybe one less destroyer and, you know, substitute that for a cruiser and a battleship, but we are in the Burgoon here, and it is such a strong ship. Uh, but as we mentioned, we spawned out here on the left flank, so we're going to hold this left flank rather strong, and that is when a target of opportunity arises. We have this Minotaur out here, and yeah, I really wanted him, and I actually made kind of a cheesy mistake right here in not taking the shot. I thought he was going to turn back out, but this kind of unique angle that he's at right here combined with the French dispersion. Now, I will say that the Burgoon, you know, having 12 turrets doesn't, you don't notice as much of that dispersion, but I was waiting for him to either turn out or make a move, and unfortunately, he goes dark there once again, and by the time he, you know, I... I'm deciding to make a shot, he actually disappears kind of right in front of that island. Unfortunate, but always, it's, I guess it's a good, you know, learning or a good lesson we can use to, for you guys to, to always take those shots. Because that shot really would have cost me nothing. Um, there weren't, you know, necessarily any battleships to, to really harm me in that position, especially because we could have turned back in. But regardless, we didn't take that opportunity. We will get another one, however, uh, on that same mino, so just pay attention. But here is where things start to get interesting. You can see that we actually have a destroyer in the cap we quickly lose an elbing out there on the right flank and that honestly sometimes you just you, th that happens you can see that that elbing was actually kind of kiting out there trying to get uh, a little bit of a flank and that is when we lose the ugumo <laughs> to a dev strike so uh, lesson to our destroyer players make sure you are watching out for those torpedo zones right the the, the zones that you typically throw torpedoes at both our destroyers sat in those zones especially in that channel there in bravo and that is when our mino uh, goes down. So what is it? Three ships here in three less than three minutes considering it took them at least 30 to 45 seconds to get into position and I don't know if you saw my facial expression but the the amount of games I've played 21,000 plus I just don't want to sit through these type of losses anymore. However we kind of put our ship in the right spot and this is you know some of the most fun I could have you know, just going out and saying, good night, Mr. Brisbane, thanks for playing. So a pretty good little group there to go right through the front of his boat. And here I'm actually kind of memeing chat because I, I know that people have good intentions, but sometimes when you just don't have an exactly perfect shot or something like that, people are like, oh, you should have aimed to the left. It's like when I watch people play Madden videos and during the moment, I, I, or watching it back, it's a lot easier to see like, oh, X was open. And yeah, it's just it's just one of those situations. But alas, there is that same Mino. We have him lined up. We took a shot at the very edge of our range. You want to use auto-aim. Auto-aim is actually a great feature for console games. Now, I know some people kind of, some guy commented like, oh, you auto-aim all the time as we lose another battleship. But auto-aim is a feature which helps you sometimes determine the direction that ships are going. Now, you should never just spam auto-aim and rely on that because it is different with with each ship's certain velocity. Uh, French battleships and Russian have a lot higher uh, velocity to their guns compared to Americans and you know certain others so you have to throw those shots accordingly. But as you can see here auto-aim kind of threw us in this back direction here for this FDG uh, and we, we aim the shot accordingly. He actually stopped and we get a little bit lucky but those beautiful mid-belt penetrations on uh, German battleships are some of the you're, you're not really going to be citadeling. Now, you 
could possibly citadel uh, an FDG here, but most German battleships, especially with Turtleback, you're not going to be citadeling uh, at, at, at this kind of range here. Uh, also, <laughs> one of our other Brisbane did actually get a diehard on the, one of the other Shimas in the game, so a huge shout out to him. I don't know how he did it, but nonetheless, uh, he, he got an elimination there, and we actually did take out another one of their destroyers, so shout out to destroyer players, man. You guys, you guys make legends go round. But even with those two destroyer kills, we are still down a ship uh, and cap points. Uh, you'll notice the enemy has two caps to R1 as we lose another Schlieffen. I, listen, when ships start falling like bowling pins, uh, it, it makes sense that the only ships remaining are going to be targeted by the vast majority of their team. But I will never understand... You know, like, we are in their spawn at this point. Now, of course, this is, I guess, what you could label the enemy weak side. But I will never understand how people can just throw away battleship health without me, you know, maybe YOLO rushed by torpedoes. It happened to me last night in the Lyon there. We got a pretty unlucky situation, four on one. And yeah, anyway, but here is that Mino and we get Dev Strike number two. So we're glad. Maybe I'm glad I didn't Dev Strike him earlier, but it doesn't matter. We've gotten the second one here. And that is when one of our Brisbane takes out the other FTG. And by some miracle, this game is now even... Well, in terms of ships, we, the enemy still has that Bravo capture point, and they are up about 140, 130 points there. So definitely not the most ideal situation, but all things considered, I was just kind of on stream. You can you can just see my facial expression. Listen, I do have fun in games like this when you're kind of playing the aggressive battleship player around corners, especially with a lot of very fragile cruisers such as the Brisbane and Mino. We have both dev struck, but... I also can appreciate the tactical prowess that this game can bring. Um, you know, utilizing cover, outplaying your, your enemies, right? Because if it was just down to brawling battleships, everyone would choose German battleships with torpedoes and just YOLO rush in. Uh, but have fun how you, you don't want to have it. But also remember, there are eight other players on the team also trying to have fun. So sacrificing your ship in, in two minutes there is maybe not the most effective way. But here, I actually make a business decision. Arshima is going in. We have a Brisbane out here on the flank. And I just wanted to gain a little bit of position. I didn't want to YOLO into this channel without knowing what was there. And that is when actually one of the Brisbane radars, we catch a, you know, a little spot of this Z-44 here. We throw a few shells over the island. Aiming at, at, at ships like this is very unique and difficult, but as you can see, we've sort of mastered it. it you, you have to rely on RNG at the end of the day. But if you lead those shots and those shells and place them where you think the destroyer is going to be, I, I know most of you who watch the streams anyway have seen me nail destroyers at 14 and 15 kilometers, which is um, you, you know not the easiest task to do. But as we have preached so many times, that is now three or 4,000 health that that Z44 does not have and as i will explain in a video coming up um, if you're matched in ships let's say it's going against another z44 you have now given your teammate the advantage now of course it doesn't always work out like that but i, I so often see battleship players throwing sailing shots over destroyers right in front of them and then they just bitch and moan about the destroyers and not supporting their teams so if you are a battleship player make good decisions and shoot at destroyers unless it's of course me and a destroyer and speaking of poor battleship play here i am caught in kind of a tough position i wanted to go north here and spread out our forces as you can see most of our team that is left is concentrating in the bravo cap and that is what they should do up until we get the capture point, right? Once you get that capture point, you want to set a mouse trap. You want to set a trap, and, and that is the reason why. You don't want to be caught in that Bravo cap, especially in a very lightly armored cruiser such as the Brisbane against two very strong battleships. As you can see, there's not much uh, room to maneuver, and it looks like that Brisbane was caught. So again, my thought process here was go north, but as you can see, that Z44, we scared away, and he was last headed north. And I said it on stream, I'm like, wow, I'm kind of in a tough position here. Do I head north and potentially get torped and, you know, have to chase this destroyer? I would be, you know, potentially getting the broadside on these guys. But it looks like they're going to go ahead and come in here. And the Burgone is actually one of those ships that does pretty well with brawling. You have a slight turtle back there. You have a bunch of armor. The Ohio and the Yamato both have pretty exposed citadels. So at this point, and, and you know, not knowing where the Z44 was at the time, uh, our 
Brisbane close to us had actually used his radar, so, and we lost the other Brisbane. So I know that even if he has a radar left, it is not going to be back up for some time. So, like I said, we decided to, with the last little bit of our engine boost here, kind of push ourselves into the Bravo cap. I, I'm looking back at this, and it's not the absolute best play, but just wait, because this is the part of the game. You, you might be looking at the thumbnail wondering, like, Aaron, what, what goes on in these next five minutes here? And guys, trust me, it literally comes down to the last shot. If you've stayed till this point, you should keep watching. That is when the Z44 gets spotted, and I think that guy actually came into my chat. He gets a beautiful torp or two on our Shima there, and the the frequency at which, and this is a good learning point, the frequency at which he has been spamming torpedoes tells me he's a German destroyer that he is running Blue Fiora. Now this is kind of very advanced knowledge to know, but Blue Fiora is a c commander with a very special perk that allows German destroyers to basically get, it halves their damage, but they get 50% uh, reload. So you trade off that damage for the reload of torpedoes. So it looks like he's kind of coming out here. I think he's either on Hydro or Radar from the Brisbane. And as we correctly predicted, he is running Blue Fiora. Uh, so he goes ahead and throws out those torpedoes as we get a massive hit on him. Now, ideally we would have liked HE in this situation, but AP on Destroyers still does a a good amount of damage as you saw we almost nearly dev struck him connecting nine out of 12 and i believe a few of those actually hit the island we did load the he but i actually went ahead and switched back to the ap for the same reason i just mentioned if we connect two or three overpens in this situation he is dead regardless and that allows us to have ap in our turrets for the upcoming engagements and we will definitely need him now here i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest this is a little kind of a, a little bit of an advanced play he can't really see where we are and he's not going to get another reload off so what i'm trying to do is just hit him with the back turret so I can have the front turrets available. We connect the back turrets there, and I literally said on stream, I said, is it Christmas? Having a Yamato come around the corner like that with his cheek wide open against one of the higher velocity battleships in the game. And this is where I truly laugh at people who think 15 inch guns are not, you know, enough. We got kind of cheesed with RNG there with a few of them hitting the water. We only connected three and it was three citadels. If we would have connected more, obviously it would have been, uh, probably one of the meanest dev strikes I would have ever gotten on top of the way we just played that. But here is where we lose actually a little bit of our RNG. We aim nice and low, five over pens, two pens with one of them being a Citadel. Now I'm not gonna lie, I, the next shot is is me just kind of rushing this in the moment. I'm gonna, I, I, che I cheese this shot. It was definitely too high here, but um, I wanted to make sure that we get it, with especially with the previous shells landing a little bit lower. And we actually did lose a turret. Uh, in that engagement. I'm trying to get the back gun on target, please! There it is, right into the cheek for a final two Citadel. So uh, we did get rickrolled by RNG at the end of that, but we have gotten the kill. We are up to 10 Citadels, and that is when our Brisbane decides to make the play of the game, trying to rush an Ohio and a Yoshino. And you guys can guess what is about to happen next. Ohio comes around the corner, Full health, nearly full health Brisbane against the strongest battleship guns in the game, or second strongest, whatever you want to label them as. And yeah, Brisbane gets dev struck with, I don't even think he got, tor no, he didn't get torpedoes off. So a glorious play by our teammate, and it is now down to us. Now the good news is we do have the cap advantage. I don't think there would have necessarily been enough time for us to tick the points in our favor, but in the heat of the moment, sometimes it's difficult to do that quick math. I'm almost sure we wouldn't have done it with the limited time left, but we are still alive. And I decided to turn away in this situation. I didn't want to go brawl in Ohio with half health and, and only two guns. Like I said, we did lose our turret in that engagement with Yamato. And that is when this Yoshino gets me on Hydro. I know he's close. I thought he was in this channel, and if he would have been, he probably would have been able to tort me You know, when I got stuck on that hole. Now, we can actually overmatch Yoshino's bow, and I think because of that, he starts to panic. Because if he would have just stayed in this situation as we tick the Confederate medal, he probably would have won. But the classic mistake that all Japanese battleship players make is, I must get my torpedoes on target. And yeah, we go ahead and turn out in anticipation of his torpedoes. 
He gets stuck on the island. We connect another Citadel. The Ohio comes around the corner, so we have to angle to him. We can see the back end torpedoes coming off. I don't think he has enough angle to get the other ones. We preemptively pop the heel, knowing that we're about to take a salvo from the Ohio. We turn because we have to get these guns on target. We have to get the kill in order to tick the points in our favor. We're going to take another torp. That's fine. We've already taken one on the bow, so it's probably a little bit saturated anyway. Again, we aim a little bit higher. The shells go fucking everywhere. I just love it when RNG is in your favor. If you're counting down, guys, we're only going to get one more reload on our front turret. It all comes down to this. Three, two, we aim slightly above the waterline, as I do for most of my shots. Holy shit, we got it. The Ohio sends his salvo, but it doesn't matter. We've preserved enough of our health. That was kill number five. 285,000 damage. Kraken unleashed, two dev strikes, and just it, one of my most insane carries. Now, of course, there was a little potatoing at the end, but if you look at it, who, which team potatoed more? I, I would have to go with my team because when you look at these scores, when you look at this XP, 4189, and the next highest is the Brisbane that got dev struck around the corner with 1700. Now, of course, we all have those games where stuff doesn't go our way. I would have to say that Yoshino is probably very upset getting stuck. Uh, on the islands there. I know I would have definitely been frustrated. You guys saw it the other day. I got I got stuck on some islands, but I think that is my top score in a battleship, 4189, and of course it is in the Burgone. I absolutely love this ship. Uh, the Conquer is very strong. We know that the Ohio is a beast. The Columbo and the Schlieffen are both secondary monsters, but all in all, I think the Burgone might be the best legendary tier battleship, and this is a good reason why. Uh, so yeah, guys, that is... One of my most insane clutch carry last second shots uh, to, to get a victory there. Um, and again, these are the types of games that just truly keep you coming back for more. But <laughs> sometimes you're not going to get the team that is going to give you that. But you should always try at least, you know, just even if it's just putting your ship in the right spot, you know, aggressively rushing in. But I hope you guys enjoy that one. By the time this video drops, I will be in Key West for my best friend's wedding. So let me know what you guys thought of that game. Was it as epic as I made the clickbait thumbnail out to be? So love you guys. I will see you guys soon. I've got a few videos lined up here for you, but I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Hey, run out. Peace.